Hello, welcome to this video from InSource Productions, where today we will be talking about using RAID in Windows 7, Part 2, Implementation. This video is a follow-up video from the first video in the series where we introduced the different types of software RAID available in the operating system. Today we'll actually see what that looks like in practice. Again, we're using the same setup, so I've built a virtual machine with Windows 7 operating system, Service Pack 1, Pro, 64-bit. The operating system is installed on a 40 gigabyte partition, and the four disks that you see there are each five gigabytes. You also see an image from disk management where the disks are unallocated. So now let's go through and see a live software demonstration of how we would set up the different types of RAIDs. So again, just for introductory purposes, the types that we'll be discussing are not called the same thing in Windows that they're called in industry, so RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5. The terms that Disk Manager uses are spanned, striped, and mirrored. So I also thought it would be interesting to show performance and size implications to setting up the RAID, so we'll also go through that using a standard tool called IOMeter. So now we're in our image in computer management with my computer displaying disk drives that the image sees. So you'll notice as of now, the image only sees the C primary partition. The neat thing about using disk management is it's all wizards driven. So let's see what it looks like to create a simple spanned volume. So I'm going to select the spanned volume option. Then I'm going to select the disks that I want to add to the volume. Click next. Sign it a drive letter. Give it a label if I wish to. Now I get a warning letting me know that I can't install an operating system on a dynamic partition, but since I already have the operating system installed, that's not really an issue here. So now we have the spanned volume created across the two disks, and if we open my computer, we see that we now have the M drive that's spanned from a size of almost 10 gigabytes, which is consistent with the two. Now let's look at some performance testing. I'm using a tool called IOMeter that I've omitted to set up, but IOMeter basically creates a file on a partition and there's a variety of tests that I can define. It's a free utility that can be downloaded. So what you see here is the responsiveness, how fast the storage is performing based on the test that it's performing. In this case, it's performing an all-in-one test just to get a gauge. So we're total IO operations per second around 1500, around 20 megabytes per second. I'll summarize those in a chart after the video. Now we're going to do the same thing with a striped volume. We'll use disks three and four for this scenario. Again, I'll right click on the disk and select the option, striped volume, follow the wizard prompts, Same warning applies. So now it's being built, it's finished. So now let's look at the same test that we just did from a performance perspective. First, let's start with the drive. Same amount of space. So now let's look at the performance information of the striped drive. Again, I'll summarize these findings in a chart so you can see them. I'm gonna run the test for a few minutes just to see what data gets returned. And finally, let's look at mirrored volumes. Again, the same process. What I did when I paused was actually delete the pre-existing striped volume so I wouldn't have to add new disks. So you'd have to do that. <clears throat> built. So notice here that I have exactly half as much storage space. Because I mirrored, I mirrored two physical volumes and I have 
each of one of them were five, so there's ten total, but only five usable because it's mirrored. Now let's look at the performance impacts of that. So now we can see the performance data being displayed. Again, I'll summarize this, but it looks quite a bit lower from a mirrored drive. So that's something you'll want to take into account. So now let's look at some performance and sizing. I've summarized it in a chart on the following slide. The baseline drives were 10 gigabytes in size. And on my image, which is a solid state drive, it was performing at around 1700 IOPS with about 22 megabytes per second being written. On the spanned and striped drives, we saw similar performance with both the full 10 gigs being usable and around 1500 IOPS with about 19 megabytes per second being written. The mirrored was drastically lower with much fewer IOPS and much smaller bandwidth of memory megabytes per second being written. This is something that you'll want to keep in mind when making choices as to which type of RAID to use based on what your data requirements are. Interested in learning more about our training tracks that we now offer? They are a great way to take the guesswork out of which class to take and when to take it. Check out the link at the bottom of the screen for more information. Thank you for watching today.